What is today Latin America was once many native nations. Spain, Portugal, France, England, the Dutch, and Danish all invaded. They carried out genocide after genocide and enslaved both natives and Africans. After independence, most new governments were still white dominated, with more genocides against natives in nations like Argentina, Brazil, and Chile. European powers hold on to some territories even today and kept invading to take their colonies back. The United States invaded too, overthrowing or trying to overthrow over 60 governments, the last attempt in the year 2020 in Venezuela. The U.S. also took half of Mexico's land and a tenth of its people, then Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. There's a long history of many Americans fearing and hating Latinos. Latin America's image and reality is often one of instability, poverty, drug cartels, revolutions, corruptions, and refugees. But it did not have to be this way. Latin America could remain all or mostly native nations. I spoke about this in detail in the previous series, What If Natives Won? Poverty, white domination, and foreign invasions could have been stopped, prevented, or limited. The U.S. could have been more Latino culturally, with higher numbers of Latinos. The U.S. could have been less racist, less dominating. Or the U.S. could be defeated. Some Latin American nations could even become regional or world powers. There is a huge lack of alternate history about Latin America and Latinos. So much alternate history is Europe-centered, mostly because so much history and history teaching is Europe-centered. This series is dedicated to scenarios, points of departure, and possibilities of Latin American victory within Latin America and a more Latino or less racist American society. My name is Al Carroll. I'm Associate Professor of History at Northern Virginia Community College. I've written mostly about wars, veterans, human rights, and genocide. My next history book will be Genocide Denial in America, about the seven genocides against indigenous people that took place in the U.S. that most people were never taught about, don't know, or deny. I've also written some science fiction, mostly alternate history. One story, Timely Saviors, appeared in a short story collection, The Witness Paradox. I'm also, together with Rob Schmidt of Bluecorn Comics, editing and putting out a short story, alternate history collection, What If Natives Won, or Killing Columbus. I've also written a sci-fi alternate history book, The Man in Black, the first of a series. Just like most history books about the Civil War and Reconstruction that were written before the Civil Rights era, the first alternate history novels imagining a Confederate victory were deeply racist, filled with notions about the inferiority and barbarism, laziness, timidity of anyone not white. Most Confederate admirers still carry some of these same unchallenged, conscious or unconscious beliefs. They assume white Americans and white Southerners are superior fighters, based on lost cause myths about white supremacy, posing as Southern chivalry, chivalry, or underdog status. This is the most absurd alternate history map by a Confederate admirer that I've found. It is pure fantasy, assuming that Confederates could do what Spain never did with disease, starvation, and even multiple genocides. It assumes Confederates could do what the U.S. has not been able to do even with the most powerful military in world history, with CIA subversion, local allies, even nuclear weapons. Even during the height of the Cold War, the U.S. never conquered or ruled directly in Latin America for longer than months. To imagine any conquest by Americans or Confederates, they must believe all, Ameri all of Latin America and all Latin Americans are too inferior, too corrupt, and too cowardly or too incompetent to fight back or win. There were plenty of angry, delusional Confederates even before the Civil War, with plans to take as much of Latin America as possible for slave states. The Knights of the Golden Circle was a secret society, in many ways an earlier version of the KKK. Its focus was not yet on terrorism against blacks, it was on expanding slavery. When Confederates began the Civil War, their focus switched to terrorism against the U.S. Much of this will depend on how the Confederacy breaks away. If successful succession comes from winning the Civil War, then the Confederacy will be exhausted. It will be broke, its economy in ruins. Confederate money is worthless, with inflation of an incredible 9,000%. Confederates have lost markets almost everywhere. The British started getting their cotton from within its own empire, India. 
Ironically, the Confederacy depends almost entirely on illegally smuggling cotton to the U.S. And almost a quarter of its young white males are dead. Perhaps 200,000 or more lost limbs to amputations. The rest refuse to fight because they oppose secession, slavery, or both. Half of all Southern white males dodged the Confederate draft. Two-thirds of the Confederate army deserted. What this means is that they simply have hardly any soldiers left, at least not willing ones. There won't be any Confederate invasions of Latin America for 25 to 30 years, just as there were not any by the U.S. either, because the public was exhausted by war. By then, there's a good chance slavery had ended, ended before the 1890s. The cotton market crashed in 1873. Cotton prices dropped through the floor. The Depression was so great, it was called the Great Depression in America until the worst one, an even worser one, hit in 1929. By the 1880s, slavery was ending worldwide, even in Brazil, everywhere but in a few parts of Africa and the Middle East. If the Confederacy were let go by the U.S. without a war, or the Confederacy somehow won early against all odds, then you almost certainly see Confederates invading to expand slavery. But, but the Confederacy almost certainly loses anywhere it tries. If the Confederacy tries to see, seize northern Mexico, for example, it will come up against both what is his nationalist, and they defeated Napoleon III and the French would-be conquerors. Likely, Mexican troops beat the French. In our own history, Mex Mexican troops beat the French, and they were the best troops Europe had. And they did so even though Mexican conservatives betrayed the nation and sided with the French. Only if Confederates ally with the French is a partial conquest possible, and then only of less populated northern Mexico. It would take many white southern colonists taking over and perhaps even ethnically cleansing the Mexican population. And then the Confederacy would still see many slave revolts because most Mexicans side with black slaves. Mexico had abolished slavery 40 years before. One of its first presidents, Vicente Guerrero, was a mixed-race black man. Texas even had to outlaw contact between Mexicans and blacks because so many Mexicans helped slaves escape. The French will be defeated, and then the Confederacy will be driven out too. The next likeliest place that Confederates would try to invade would be Cuba or Puerto Rico. At, th at that time, both of them were under Spain's empire. Defeating Spain is very possible. It had been a weak empire for over a century, corrupt and poorly run, with an increasingly radicalized working class. Cuba fought the Ten Years' War for Indep Independence. While that didn't succeed, the war ended slavery in Cuba. Puerto Rico gained some autonomy from Spain. There's no reason the Confederate invasion wouldn't face long, brutal guerrilla wars. If the Confederacy still wins, they also have to face local Spanish slave owners who hold the best land. Those slave owners, Spaniards, have to either be cleansed or become collaborators. The final two places Confederates might invade are the Dominican Republic and Haiti. Dominicans had just defeated a Spanish attempt to reconquer them at the same time as the U.S. Civil War. Spain was badly beaten, losing over 10,000 troops, many of them dying from yellow fever. There's no reason any Confederate invasion wouldn't also be a disaster. Haiti is famous for the most successful slave revolt in world history, even defeating Napoleon's horrific attempt at outright genocide. Confederate victory would not be easy. This is very different from later American invasions done to support puppet governments or collect debts. The Confederates likely would lose huge armies of 75,000, just like the French did, just as the British lost 45,000 troops when they invaded. The Confederates could try invading Central America or even South America, but the Confederacy had a joke of a navy. One more reason an invasion of, of Cuba, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, or Haiti would fail. The Confederate Navy had barely a hundred ships, and they couldn't defeat and didn't even try to fight the American Navy. The Confederate Navy was just a collection of raiders attacking only civilian ships, incapable of a naval invasion or blockade. Their record in combat was terrible, two-thirds of its ships destroyed or captured. 
Most don't know about this because Confederate sympathizers bizarrely depict this t piracy and terrorism as heroic. A disastrous Confederate war, humiliated by non-whites, is the worst thing for a Confederate society based on white supremacy. It would radicalize not only the nations it invaded, but the Confederacy itself. It would lead to many more slave revolts in the Confederacy. And large numbers of, of slaves in that Confederacy have already fled. Or there would be harsher slavery and repression from fear of revolts, leading to more international isolation. The Confederacy would become much like South Africa under apartheid. A humiliating defeat by a small non-white nation will also lead to many more mass desertions and radicalizing of Confederate soldiers or veterans, as happened many times before in many other nations. It happened in Russia after World War I, leading to the Bolshevik Revolution. It happened in Germany and Italy after World War I, leading to the rise of fascism and Nazism. It also happened in Turkey, Bolivia, and Brazil. This would also be at the same time as the rise of labor unions, socialism, and anarchism. There are bound to be radical uprisings among poor whites, and perhaps no more Confederacy itself. One of the most common alternate history stories is that the Confederate States of America become communist, or otherwise radical leftist. Losing Latin American wars is one of the likeliest ways it could have happened. This is the end of the video. Please repose freely, like, and subscribe. This has been a Latin American Victory. Next time we will discuss what if Cuba is independent sooner.